Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring you His Word. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Oh, indeed, burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. Thank you, precious Lord. We receive your word with all gladness. And because we think it important that you give us your word because you see us as the ones you have made and you call us gods. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. First John chapter 5 and verse number 13. Now we stopped in verse 12 yesterday. And verse 12 it says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It's as simple as that. I told you that yesterday. And now he says, verse, verse 13, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. He's not saying you shall have eternal life. Did you see that? He didn't say that. He said, I'm writing these things to you who would believe in the name of the Son of God. You believe in the name of the Son of God? I told you yesterday also, I told you, I said, it takes a God to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It takes the Word of God to see the Word of God and believe so when you believe that jesus is the son of god you are born of god so you are the word of god made flesh also yeah 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 <laughs> i pray we will come to that place of knowledge and function by who we truly are thank you jesus look at this now I'll read it again. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Why is he writing? That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You have eternal life already. But how do you express eternal life? By continuously living and believing in that name what does it mean to continue believing in that name yeah we, i believe in the name of jesus i believe that jesus is son of god i believe no no that's not what he said if you believe then you also believe that he speaks and if you believe that he speaks then you will carry out every instruction he gives to you you see he's not now 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 uh -huh. now that's to tell you his instructions are not locked in the bible his instructions are continuous. He's speaking to us today. He's giving us commandments today. He's giving us commandments concerning your life every day. As you receive those, those, you know, those instructions, those commandments from him, you, you are demonstrating faith by acting on the word or keeping the word that he gives to you. Then he says, look, this is eternal life. You remember Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. He says, Father, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That they may know. Now, how do you know him? You will never know him through the books. You will never know Jesus in the Bible. You will never know him. Let me tell you this truth. You can never know Jesus from the Bible. Never, never, never. You will never know him. You will only read about him. You will know about him. You will know things about him. But you will never know him. You know why? Because he is not in the Bible. He is alive today. So you read the Bible. It tells you all about him. After reading all about him, what do you do? Find him. But I was a he that seek him will find him. <laughs> yeah. Find him. Until you meet him, you will not know life. He didn't say he that has the word about the son has life. He said he that has the son, the son, the son. It means the son has to be real to you. You have to be given the son. You have to receive the son. Not words about the son. Receive the son. 
So that's why I tell people, no man can get you saved. Only the Holy Spirit will get you saved. So that's why it says, that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son. It's a continuous work. Not Bible now. Reality. So what, what, what did the Lord tell you last? When last did the Lord speak to you? When last did he give you his word? Are you born again? Yeah, I didn't know you're born again. Oh, you know, five years ago, I went for one service. And when the pastor preached, the preaching touched my heart. When he made the altar, I knew it was time. And I went out to give my life to Christ. Okay, so that's how you know you're born again. How do you know you're still born again? Ah, I, I know now, once saved now, you know, when you're saved, then will you lose your salvation. Hey, the way you know you're born again today is by his word that is given to you today. If he stopped speaking to you last month, why did he stop speaking to you since last month? You know, some people don't pay attention to his word till the beginning of the year. And then he speaks to them. And then they feel because he has spoken, they will carry that word till the end of the year. No, sir. He speaks all the time. Every day, every second, he is speaking. If you are listening, you will hear. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Wow. <laughs> you see our confidence in life. I told you, he said he will never leave us nor forsake you, nor forsake us. And this is the thing he is, that, that he does being with us. He tells us what to do. Now, when I want to pray for something, now you, you, you need to get this. When I want to pray for something, I go before the Lord and I say, Lord, how do I approach um, this issue? How do I pray about this thing? So, then, then his word comes to me. His wisdom is deposited in my heart. He tells me, pray like this. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. So I take on that word and I speak as he has commanded me to say. You remember Ezekiel and in the Valley of Dry Bones? He said, I spoke as I was commanded. He didn't say, I prayed and as I felt like. No, he said, I prayed or I spoke as I was commanded. Who commanded him? The Lord commanded him. And he just said what he was commanded to say. And the miracles started happening. The reason most times you're not seeing miracles in your life is because you are saying your own words. Hey, quit speaking your own words. Pause and go before the Lord and say, Lord, what's your mind concerning this issue? How do I approach it? See, that's the first prayer you should pray when you want to pray about any issue. What's your mind, Lord? What's your mind? What are you thinking concerning this thing? How do I say? What do I say? What, how do I? And then soon, you hear the word of God come to you. It has happened to me several times. I'm praying concerning something. And then the Lord says, this is how to pray about it. Pray like this. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Then I'll pray. Many years ago, I, 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 a friend of mine came to see me. And she was traveling. So we got to the park. And while she sat in the car, I said, let's pray. And as I said, let's pray, I heard the word of the Lord instantly. He said, any, I just heard him say, anytime you are traveling or you are praying for someone traveling, pray like this. <laughs> good. And he told me what to pray. So till this day, I still pray that prayer whenever I'm traveling, whenever I'm praying for someone who's traveling. Now, why? Because the word of the Lord came to me concerning that. Now, that's how the word of God comes to you concerning everything in your life. That's why we are full of faith. We are full of faith because the word of God is there for every. Why do you do this? Because the word of God came to, came to me in such a way. Why do you have this? Because the word of God came to me in, in, this, in, in this regard. Why? Because everything, that's what we call full of faith. Thank you, Jesus. So don't be a man of prayer and not have the word. 
What do I mean the word? I'm not just talking about scriptures. Scriptures are not enough. Scriptures, not all scriptures. In fact, scriptures itself don't qualify as the word of God. It is the word of God spoken to someone, but it doesn't qualify primary as the word of God spoken to you. When you read scriptures, the, every word you read in scripture is true. Make no mistakes about it. It is true. But how then can you appropriate it to your own life? You can only be certain when that same word has been spoken to you. See? So when the Lord speaks, you take his word. Now that's what he's saying here. He says, if now... This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So when you pray like that, say, Lord, what's your mind? Then he tells you what to say. The moment he tells you what to say and you pray it, what happens? He hears you. And then he says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Simple, simple. It's like, it's like you're asking um, the examiner how do I approach this question and then the examiner tells you when you see this question approach it like this and you get into the exam hall and you do exactly what the teacher tells you to do how would you fail he's the one that's going to mark that course so how will you how will you fail as long as you obey the teacher's instruction you will never fail it's the same thing says if we know that he has heard us then we know we have our petitions granted how do we know he has heard us because we prayed according to his will according to what he told us to pray hallelujah thank you jesus look at verse 16 man. if anyone sees his brother sin in a sin which does not lead to death he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death there is sin leading to death i do not say that you should pray about it praise god what's he talking about anyone who now now listen you know sometimes i've heard people talk about in these scriptures and they get confused about it he says listen what, what sin leads to death? I mean, it's, I mean, sin that causes death. You can't even pray because you're already dead. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, he says, if anyone sees a brother sin in a sin, which does not lead to death. But sometimes you, you, you know, for example, even according to law, when, when someone commits murder, now you know justice is supposed to take its cause. It will now take the special grace of God. Especially when you, the, you intended to kill that person, for example. So they call it premeditated murder. The punishment for that is, is, is death. Straight on death. So, but then, he says, If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life you ask you pray you talk to that person and he's willing to repent you pray for him and then god gives him a chance to live praise god mm. thank you jesus he says there is a sin leading to death i do not say that we should pray about that all unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not leading to death. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, do I have time to share this now? Our time is actually up. Praise God. Let me see if I can look at this and share it tomorrow with you. God bless you. Bye-bye.